Well, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you here to UCW Zero. Josh Damien alongside my special broadcast partner for this week, former UCW Zero heavyweight champion, Derek Gennetti. Nice to be back in the commentary booth. Very excited about this match between our reigning Divas champion, that being Sierra Rose. Definitely got that right. And tonight, of course, Sierra Rose, who will be in action, one-on-one -on -one action here with uh, Tommy Purr from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Purr, of course, has a little bit of a beef with Sierra Rose, who just a few weeks ago beat uh, Purr as Purr was on contention for the UCW women's title. It's one of those weird things in wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of interested in this Tommy Purr guy. He's made a claim to UCW Zero Management that it is okay for him to challenge for the Divas title because Diva does not mean a gender. Diva does not mean a sex. Diva is a style. Tommy Purr considers himself a man diva. Are you a man diva? I, I don't even know what a man diva would constitute. And whoa, hey, whoa, hey, wait a minute. I thought this gal was suspended. I, I thought you were suspended. You and you and I both, but for some odd reason, she's still out here. It was actually myself who suspended her uh, just a few weeks ago, and apparently she still thinks she can come out here. We've got to get better security guards. Power walking her way to the ring and snatches the mic. I'm kind of interested in what Marty Daniels has to say. continue to not end here at UCW Zero, ladies and gentlemen, and oh my gosh. Derek, I'm just going to let you talk about what you're seeing right now. I'm kind of shocked. I'm kind of shocked. I think it's, this is what they mean when they say shocked silence. You should try it on for size. Alright, ready? Go. Wow, that was riveting. Yeah. Yes, really, great stuff. That's great. That's probably the best commentary I've done in two episodes right there. That is for sure right here. So Sierra Rose taking on Tommy Misfit, or excuse me, not Tommy Misfit, that's a completely different Tommy, Tommy Purr. Tommy Purr! Tommy Purr versus Sierra Rose. So have you told Zach James yet? Told him what? You haven't told Zach? That, what, what am I supposed to tell him? That you have a crush on his girlfriend. I want to hang on now. I don't know why you're making all these insinuations. You have, do you have a crush on Sierra Rose? No. You think she's ugly? What, no. I what's wrong with you? What? What? I don't. I'm being bombarded by questions. That's what's wrong with me. Is Tommy Purr more your type? Whoa. Hang on now. Let's let's. It's uh, cool. Go. I don't judge. I. I That's well, I, fine, I, man. Why don't you look at what's going on in the ring right now? We got to make sure that our referees are clean. I don't think this is the proper testing. Wow. Yep. Only in UCW Zero. Exactly. Now, I don't know if this match is particularly fair, given the difference in gender between Tommy Purr and Sierra Rose, but if you've watched UCW Zero before, you know the competency of Sierra Rose. This gal knows how to wrestle. This gal knows how to fight. And given that, I think Sierra Rose has a fighting chance against Tommy Purr. Well, you definitely got that right. Sierra Rose, a champion, of course, for a reason. Being that, quite frankly, she's earned it. You know, that's one of the things is that you go to our UCW Zero training school, you learn how to wrestle, and the next thing you know, you can be the champion. Sierra Rose, a product of the UCW Zero Training School. I think she's been wrestling for about three years. Would that be accurate? Uh, it seems like it's very close to that, that's for sure. Ooh, nice wrestling maneuver there by Tommy Purr. 
Looks like he's going for a step over toe hold and a clean break. Like Tommy, Tommy Kerr says that's one, everybody gets one. That Does that make him one. a gentleman? Yes, of course, why wouldn't he? He's a gentleman. Ooh, I don't know, he might be a gentleman, but that wasn't very ladylike. No, definitely not, that's for sure. And of course, you know, her boyfriend is at ringside. Come on, man. And you have a crush on her. I wonder I what Zach James that. feels about know, that. I don't know why you keep insinuating what you're insinuating. Is it hot in here? I need some water. Hey, that one's mine. All right, I'll take the other one. So what we've established so far on this broadcast is that Josh Damien has a crush on Sierra Rose. But, <laughs> that Zach James does not know and that Tommy Purr considers himself to be a diva. Okay, one out of everything that you just said is true. Everything else is not, though. I don't know why you keep insinuating these. Can we just focus on the wrestling at hand? So you're saying Zach does know? Oh, gosh. Look at that Irish whip into the corner. Sierra Rose with those kicks to the midsection. Kicks right to the stomach of Tommy Purr. Irish whip and Tommy Purr, nobody home right there. Oh, he hurt his purr parts. He hurt his purr parts. Her, of course, was trying to go for a move right there, but it looks like he did hurt his knee. And the referee doing his due diligence, he's looking at that, it looks like his left knee. And Tommy Purr gets to his feet, you gotta give it up for Sierra Rose, she's allowing this to happen. We gotta make sure that he is still able to compete in this match. Well, and you know, it looks like Purr is going to be needing some assistance out of the ring. And this match may be unceremoniously over before... Oh! That was cheating. That, that was cheap. That was dirty. That was dirty, and that was just... I, I, don't, I don't know if it was uncalled for. I don't know what it was, but that was just... Wow. He tricked me. Did he trick you, he Josh? He tricked me. And now look at this guy manhandling Sierra Rose. After he played that job and pulling her hair. This this guy's a scoundrel. He calls himself a man diva. I think he's a scoundrel. Well, you know, definitely a diva, that's for sure. And now taunting our diva's champion. Oh! oh. And kicking her in the ribs. This is kind of unsettling right now. Well, you know what? Any way to win a match, I suppose. And I mean, faking an injury, I guess, is one way to do it. And the ref's got to step in. You cannot grasp the hair like Tommy Purr is right now. And a hair drag across the ring. You know, I mean, I guess the referee is okay with it, so... I'm not okay with it. Oh, jeez, oh, that kick was a little high. Oh. oh, my goodness. And another, throwing her across the ring like a rag doll. Man, I'll tell you what, I mean, it's just, it's one thing to, uh, to cheat, but this guy is just taking it to the max right now. Oh. A jawbreaker by Sierra Rose. And look at her, look at the agility here to the top rope. Nice arm drag. Sierra, though, still selling that neck. She's been thrown around in this match. Sizes up her opponent. Nice monkey flip, but holds on. And look at Sierra Rose is pissed. And she is taking it out on the man diva. What? Whoa, hang on. Hey, what's what's going on here? Oh, it's the most action the referee has seen in quite some time, that's for sure. Probably more action than you've seen, too. Wait, hang on now. This isn't about me. I don't know why you keep making this about me. Because I like you. Uh -huh. I like you, Josh. Oh, and here we got schoolboy. That could be it. Tommy Purr able to slide his shoulder off the mat, but the momentum in this matchup has definitely changed. Here we go now, look at this. Oh! Do it again, do it again. Make it two, rip open his gear, chop that boy. Look at this. She quiets the crowd. Oh! I wanna see three. 
Yes, turnabout's fair play. Throw that boy around by his hair. Well, here we go now. Irish whip reverse. Tommy Purr has got Sierra Rose up on his shoulders. Oh, big Samoan drop. Pinfall. Tommy Purr obviously bigger than Sierra Rose and using the weight to his advantage by hoisting her onto his shoulders and dropping her straight south with a Samoan drop. The crowd getting behind Sierra Rose, but she's in dire straits at this point of the matchup. Zach James as well trying to get this crowd behind Sierra Rose now. Tommy Purr gets Rose up to her feet, throws her into the corner, and it looks like looks like the Mad Demon is going to go from one corner to the other. Oh, and she but he blocks the kick. I think the back of her head just hit the mat. And what's Tommy Purr going for here? It's a Boston Crab is what it looks like. This is an incredibly painful hole. Just look at the spinal cord of Sierra Rose, bent in a very unsettling position. She might have to tap out. It would be, oh, look at this now. Rose able to counter here. What is she countering into? Oh, but Tommy Purr cowers to the ropes. Looks like Purr able to make it to the outside before Rose was able to actually do anything. And now she's he's being consoled by Marty Daniels. And I think they should not turn their no! back. The hair flies here at the UCW Zero Arena. Sierra Rose through the middle rope. Suicide dive taking out Tommy Purr. Referee has to get both of these individuals back in the ring in order for this match to continue here on UCW Zero. Uh, look at this now. Oh. Marty Daniels behind the referee's Sierra back Rose. and a oh. kick to the stomach. The ref being distracted and Marty Daniels. Oh! Spine first into the ring post. And again, Zach James, instead of helping his girlfriend, trying to summon the referee. That was a mistake there by Zach. Yeah, definitely was. Someone will be sleeping on the couch tonight. Zach James tried to do the right thing. The guys, his intentions were good. He's got to do something here, though. Look at this now, James getting into the face of Marty Daniels here. And I think Zach James is holding back because of that taboo of hitting a girl, but it's definitely not doing justice to his female counterpart. Look at this now, it looks like Tommy Purr rolling Sierra Rose into the ring after that assault on the ring post. For those of you who don't know, Marty Daniels was actually suspended because of this kind of action against uh, Craig Stevens. Pinfall, two, three, unbelievable. Highway robbery here in UCW Zero. Marty Daniels not involved in this match officially, but boy did she make her presence felt. Driving the, the back of Sierra Roses into that ring post repeatedly. Well, you know, that's one way to win a match, and Tommy Purr definitely got some revenge here tonight at UCW Zero. We've got more to come. Stay tuned. BR Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero, Utah's best live pro wrestling action in Salt Lake City, Utah, at the UCW Training Center, 47 South Orange Street. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $3 for kids 6 and under. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bell time is 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to www.ucw-0.com or call 801-699-7977. And remember, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. Leave it to us. We are Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Motivational pain.
We're back here at UCW Zero Live, where Dante Acosta will come out with his tag team partner, the Dorito, excuse me, Durango Kid. Two new high flyers to UCW Zero. These guys incite the fans, they're full of energy, very athletic youngsters with a very promising future. Well, and you know what, Dante Acosta, I mean, MK was telling me this last time, but it looks like uh, Dante Acosta has taken the Durango kid under his wing, which is interesting because Dante is kind of a younger man himself. Yeah, but I think these guys have a lot in common. They have similar styles. I think they complement each other very well, and I'm very interested to see what these gentlemen can do in a tag team match. Well, they'll have their hands full here tonight as they face the UCW Zero Tag Team Champions, everyone's favorite, the American Pitbulls. The reigning UCW Zero Tag Team Champions. With one exception, these guys have taken on all challengers for the better part of a year. Do you know who that exception was? Um, you and Martin Kassaus? That is correct. We did score a pinfall victory against the American Pitbulls. But they beat us not once, not twice, but three times. Surprised that you're willing to admit that. That's very humbling of you. Oh, uh, in all three of those cases, I can honestly say that the better team won. And I, when I say that, that's because this is a very good tag team that have grown and improved. Well, well, I don't know about grown, but continue. I didn't mean physically grown. I mean grown as in a talent perspective, Josh. I definitely will have to agree with you on that one. Craig Stevens and Jason Jackson, the captain and the pit bull of the American Pit Bulls. I think this is kind of a scary title defense for the American Pit Bulls, though. Because the American Pit Bulls, like I've said, they beat all comers. But I think they might be caught off guard, or like we like to say in sports, caught sleeping when it comes to Dante Acosta and the Durango Kid. Well, you never know. Anything can happen here in UCW Zero. I mean, Dante Acosta got that haircut. That's for starters. I like his haircut. I just, I just didn't think that he would be rocking that kind of a mohawk. I like his hair a lot more than Swade's. Well, that's just pulling punches now. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would consider Swade's haircut to be a 2. On the other hand, I think Dante's haircut, a solid 8 in my book. Alright, you are just asking for me to walk away from this broadcast table right now, which I am a constant professional and I will refuse to do. I double dog dare you. No. Well, here we go. It looks like Dante and Durango want to play the sportsman. And the American Pit Bulls are willing to oblige. Interesting stuff here. Definitely something that we see constantly from the American Pit Bulls is that there's a, there's a, a respect from their opponents for them. And I think, I think that's something that they have definitely earned, that's for sure. Yes, American Pit Bulls, my favorite tag team in UCW, possibly the best tag team we've ever had here in UCW. And that is saying something. Nice counter chain rustling here by Jason Jackson. Cinches up an arm ringer. Dante looking for the ropes, goes for the roll. Oh, nice maneuver with the hip up, and he takes the arm. Craig Stevens trying to get this crowd to make a little bit of noise here at UCW Zero. Dante stepping on the back of the leg to gain a power, a position of power. Oh, and look at that. Polishing the head of the American Pitbull. Oh, and <laughs> Jason Jackson did not take kindly to that. Yeah, so much for respect on that one. I think that's a tactical mistake by Dante. Being in the ring with the Pitbull like I have, this is a guy you do not want to anger. You do not want to make mad. And I think he just did that. Here we go now. Irish whip right there. Look at this. Oh, big drop down right there. Dante Acosta. Whoa. Oh, drop toe hold right there by Jason Jackson. I at least got one out of those three moves called correctly. And now cinching up a front face lock. Jason Jackson, the bigger of the two, also the, the stronger of the two. But look at Dante using leverage 
to back the pit bull into the corner. Let's see if we see a clean break. No, shoot off, up and over. Nicely done there by the pit bull. Close line duck, elbow duck. Oh, look at that little dosey -si do action. Into the calf kick, foot straight to the face. Nice maneuver there. Two, oh no, not even a two count right there. Great execution. I think Dante Acosta is probably running on pure adrenaline. But look at the pit bull retains control with that side headlock. Dante once again puts him in a full body into the pit bull, backs him into the corner. Point of the elbow into the top of the head. Shoot off. Looks like Dante going for that elbow and scores perfectly with it. Can he be making two? Oh, elbow right to the jaw. And now kick to the stomach. Down goes the pit bull. Another kick there. Reverse right there, look at this now. Jason Jackson, big back elbow. And the snapmare. Oh, calf kick to the back of the head. Nice move by Jackson. It's a great job right there by Jackson, able to use the amount of space that he had in the ring to his advantage. But look at the fight of Dante Acosta, fights right back, takes the headlock, and makes a timely tag to his, his tag team partner in his second match, the Durango Kid. You know, it's hard to believe that it's this kid's second match now. He's just been such a constant around the UCW Zero facility. Oh, look at that, La Mahistro pin. Nice execution there. Jason Jackson kicks out, and an arm drag. And another arm drag. Look at the Durango Kid using those basic but effective maneuvers. Up top looking for the monkey flip. Bounces, oh, look at the counter, and he does. He gets it, monkey flip. Two. Some great execution right there by the Durango Kid. I guarantee that's something that Jason Jackson did not see coming. And now snatches a headlock. Sound strategy, but I think he's riding a little low with that headlock, given the opening to the pit bull. Uh -oh. Ducks the clothesline. Oh, look at that. Back elbow executed to perfection. Beautiful back elbow, even a fadeaway on that one. And needs to make the tag, does so to Craig Stevens. We see some awesome tandem offense from these two gentlemen. Look at this. Double Japanese arm drag, nicely executed there. And here comes Stevens. Off the ropes, elbow drop, nicely done. Immediately into the cover. Two. No one home there, but just a two count. And this is where the Pit Bulls can show their tag team experience by isolating the Durango Kid. Kid fights back, oh, and then takes a forearm. Nice punches. Shoot off into the corner. Look at this. Oh, big spear right there. Oh, oh I think the top of Steven's head went right into the dome of the Durango Kid. Nice move. I, I don't understand the references made by these fans here. I didn't even hear what they were saying. They, they were doing the, the, the Meow Mix theme song. Meow Mix? Yes, Meow Mix. Wow. I don't, I don't understand it. They're the Pit Bulls. Why are they doing Meow Mix? I don't know. Some brutal chops by Craig Stevens. Shoot off into the corner. Nice move. Oh, beautiful cross body block by the Durango Kid. You know the Meow Mix theme song, right? Please, I want don't chicken, do it. I stop. want liver, Please. Meow Mix, Please Meow. Stop. Well, I think if I keep going, we have to pay them, so. Nice chop there by the Durango Kid, trying to fight back in this matchup. Reversal by Stevens. And a hip toss. And Stevens looks pumped up. Big body slam by Stevens. Craig Stevens looks on top of his game tonight, doesn't he, Josh? Stevens definitely is pumped up. As a kid, I constantly see him in the gym, and I'll tell you what, he's always there giving 100%, just like he does here in the ring. Oh, 
face into the turnbuckle, makes the tag, and this is the point where I think the Pitbulls can isolate the Durango kid, which could be very effective against a younger, less experienced team. Oh! Great execution right there by Jason Jackson. A hip toss into almost a neck breaker. And if you're the Durango kid, you're in a bad way right now. He needs to fire back with some kind of offense and make that tag to Dante. Here we go now. Irish trip reversed by Jason Jackson. Ducks that clothesline right there. Oh, Durango kid with a big drop kick right there. And he needs to make the tag. Inching forward. This could be it. No. Big stop. I think he was literally inches away. Back will flip out by the kid, and a double clothesline. Both competitors off their feet. The question being asked, which man will be able to get to his feet first? Will it be Don, or excuse me, the Durango kid or Jason Jackson? Who will make the tag? Looks like Durango kid makes it first, but Jason Jackson able to make one as well. And Don't here we go. go, Acosta beats him to the punch. Clothesline, discus clothesline, oh, and a kick to the stomach, back up to his feet, and an insiguri, beautiful combo there by Dante Acosta. This kid shows me something every time he is in the ring, something new. He is pumped up, and Craig Stevens looks dazed and confused. Stevens doesn't see this coming. He's not going to see it coming. Look at this. Whoa. Oh, he ducks. Almost playing possum there. I guess he saw it coming. Double duck there. Oh, and that's that big jumping punch. Dante on Dream Street. And oh, what a spear. That's got to be it. Two. No. They had me fooled. I thought we had a three count there. Craig Stevens, I don't know if this guy's got a football background or what, but that was one hell of a tackle. Definitely have to agree with you on that one, Derek. Captain Craig Stevens wanting Dante Acosta to get back to his feet. Dante was clutching at his stomach. He might have broken ribs. He looks confused. Stevens, kick to the stomach. Cinches him up. We've seen this before. No, nice counter. Spin out, push. Looks for the super kick. Another spin. Oh, kick to the stomach. He's got him hooked up. Could this be it? Oh. Yes. The back of his head spikes the mat. Oh, and God. that's the three count. Well, still your tag team champions, folks, the American Pitbulls. You know what, though? A great challenge. You got to respect the fight that these newcomers put up. But those men sitting in the middle of our ring are our tag team champions for a reason. And that reason was on full display here tonight. Successful title defense by the American Pitbulls. These guys are proving it. Night in, night out. Best tag team in the Western United States. I gotta agree with you there, and of course a mutual sign of respect always shown by the Pitbulls here at UCW Zero. Well folks, stay tuned because we've got more action coming up here on UCW Zero TV. BR Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero, Utah's best live pro wrestling action in Salt Lake City, Utah at the UCW Training Center, 47 South Orange Street. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $3 for kids six and under. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bell time is 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to www.ucw-0.com or call 801-699-7977. And remember, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals, leave it to us. We are Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Motivational pain.
you are watching UCW Zero TV, but folks, did you know that you can watch UCW Zero TV on YouTube? Check us out at UCW Zero, uh, just youtube.com slash UCW Zero. You can also check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash UCW Zero Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Or, you know, you can follow us on Twitter at UCW Zero. Same thing with our Instagram page as well. Or, you know what, just check out the website. It's www.ucwzero.com. Derek, you have a Twitter handle. Do I? All right, well, I think you are. There you go. You can, you can. I do. You're hearing it here. I'm hearing it here. I have Twitter. I'm famous. Me, LeBron James. And the Iron Sheik. What I'd like to have right now is for all of you out of shape and fitting fitter idiots to keep the noise down. Have you ever heard the expression, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery? I have. It's a lie. Rick Rude is probably rolling over in his grave after hearing a sick, pathetic ripoff of his catchphrase by the Deacon of De Doom. This guy is shameless. He's a hypocrite. He hangs out with Cassidy. There's absolutely nothing to like about this guy. If only there were a hero. Oh, wait, there is. And there he is, Kid Kane. We call him our resident superhero, here to fight crime, and that crime coming at the hands of the crime family here at Ultra Championship Wrestling. Why don't you lay down what went down last week on UCW TV? Well, what happened last week was Cassidy was in a match taking on, oh gosh, who was he? Who was Cassidy? It was Zach James. Zach James. Cassidy versus Zach James. At one point, it looks like Cassidy had the thing in the bag, but all of a sudden, Kid Cade came out of nowhere, and Cassidy got distracted, sent his two henchmen out to take care of Kid Cade. When Cassidy came back in the ring, though, Zach James was able to counter, get the three fall, and that was the end of that. Yeah, Kid Cade ran the old decoy play and ran it to perfection. Cassidy took his eye off the ball, and he got beat by Zach James. The crime family looking for some redemption, and that redemption looks to be coming at the hands, or more appropriately, the fists of the Deacon of Doom. So here we go now, the Bible Belt Champion, the Deacon of Doom, takes on former heavyweight champion, former Ultra X champion, and I believe as well a former tag champion in Kid Cade. Yes, Kid Cade, a very accomplished wrestler here on UCW Zero, at the beginning of the year was involved in quite the feud with Bronson. And he came out on top of that feud, cutting the hair of Bronson. Stipulation, of course, of that match was a mask versus hair match. Yes, and with all that momentum in his back pocket, I think Kid Cade wants to move on and move up the ladder. And this is a good opportunity to do so. If you can't tell just from that alone, the crowd does not like the Deacon of Doom. The Deacon of Doom, his popularity rivals that of Josh Damien. Whoa, hang on, let's, whoa. That just seems uncalled for. But is it accurate? No, it's not even close to being accurate. These people hate me far more than him. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Or as the French say, touche. Deacon of Doom suckered him in there. And now look at laying those right hand right into the face of Kid Cade and now choking him on the rope. Big shoot off by the Deacon of Doom. Nice reversal by Kid Cade. And a shoulder tackle with authority. Whoa. And a DDT. Well, Kid Cade has this contest all wrapped up for right now. Of course, the contest hasn't only been going on for about 30 seconds. Deacon already needs to take a timeout. Well, you know, I don't like this maneuver per se, but I can't argue with its effectiveness. The guy just got dropped on his head. He's probably confused. The DDT, one of the most time-tested maneuvers in professional wrestling, takes some time to recover from that. As you can see, the Deacon taking his time right now. Wow, 
definitely have to agree with you on that one. Another flying shoulder tackle by Kid Kate. And a nice Japanese arm drag. And the drop kick. And Deacon, he wants a timeout. How many timeouts can this man take? I mean, technically the answer is zero. Well, in the first half of a football game, you are allowed three timeouts. So within the first minute and a half of this match, he has taken two timeouts. I think he just said he pulled his armpit. That, that just seems like a dirty maneuver on two different levels. And now going for the test of so Deacon suckered him in again. Kid Cade's got to get smarter when you're working against a guy who is a master in the underhanded tactics of professional wrestling. I don't know if it's necessarily him being smarter, but I mean, it is one of those situations where you know, it's, it's just strategy and basic one-on-one -on -one wrestling. He's cunning like a fox, like a hairless fox who happens to wear granny panties. How often do you see that? I've never seen it. I've never seen it either, but I guess for the first time tonight we are. Points for originality. There you go. Oh, oh what a suplex by the Deacon of Doom. Cassidy proud of his main man, as is the Dark Angel. The Deacon just threw Kid Kate up into the heavens and then brought him down. Oh! Nice clothesline. Deacon of Doom, I'm surprised. He's really uh, showcasing some authority in this matchup. And then look at this maneuver. Distracting the referee while Cassidy takes the advantage on Kid Cade. That's smart. I'm going to have to tell him that's smart. Exactly right. Well, and you know, it's one of the things that we were talking about last week was that uh, the situation where it's kind of a four-on-one contest right now. And that's what it is right here. It's four-on-one. Kid Cade might as well just be in a handicap match. And that cover is not going to get it done. Cade's got to find a way to fire back here, though. Shoot off into the corner and follows it up with the elbow. Looks like it caught Kid Cade right in the temple. Deacon of Doom pulling Kid Cade now out of the corner. Irish whip from one corner to the other. Look at this. Oh, Kid Cade came out of the corner on a bang. What would you call that, partner? Oh, some kind of a sleeper takedown almost. I don't know what to call it, but you can't argue with its effectiveness. Kid Cade needs to seize the momentum and kick it into another gear here. Definitely will agree with you on that one. As a chief shot right there, that was a thumb to the throat, I believe, of Kid Cade. Deacon of Doom, he could be looking for his big maneuver, that spinning neck breaker. Oh, there it was. Nicely done. Nicely done by the Deacon. Very well executed, that's for sure. The Deacon of Doom looking to take advantage right here, that foot on the throat. And the oh, Deacon, geez. look at him stepping right on the carotid artery of Kid K, that'll stop the blood flow. That's a dangerous maneuver. Simple but effective. Kid Kate is in a very bad way here at UCW Zero. He needs to find some opening and seize on it because right now he is just literally getting beat down, not only by the Deacon of Doom, but by Cassidy and the crime family as well. And look at Cassidy raking the eyes of Kid Kate and now playing innocent. The camera caught that. The ref might not have seen that, but the camera definitely pointed right at the underhanded tactics of Cassidy. And here we go, an Irish whip. Do you have to doing? Looking for a big sidewalk slam right here. Oh, and he gets it. One, make it two, and oh, Kid Cade barely getting his shoulder off the mat. Kid Cade has got a rally here at this point. He's got to look for a comeback. We're looking at four to five straight minutes of the Deacon of Doom just beating up Kid Cade. Yeah, Cade needs something here. 
Here we go. From one side of the ring to the other, the Deacon of Doom. A big splash, but nobody's home. He missed. Can Cade capitalize? I think he can. Oh, elbow right to the head. And the big punch. We've seen this before. One of my favorite maneuvers. Airborne Kid Cade. Look at that. Oh, beautiful execution. Upside down elbow. And I think Cassidy just put the foot of the Deacon of Doom on the rope. He I think that could have been it. He definitely did. We all saw it, and I agree with you. That could have been it. That could have been this match. Could have been over right there, but not quite. Oh, blocks the belt shot. Referee in a very interesting position here. Throws the belt down. A disqualification will not happen. Here he goes. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh. I spoke too soon. And this match thrown out. And look at the Dark Angel like a piranha feasting on the Kid KK trying to fight back. This is four on one. This is a mugging. Well, and you know what? I mean, I can't say I'm I'm surprised. They're called the crime family for the reason they don't exactly follow the rules. A mafia-style beatdown by the crime family, and Kid Kate all by himself as he's getting tugged and beaten by three men and a little vixen in the center of the ring. This is just disgusting. How can you be proud of yourself? Like seriously. No. Insult. Oh, oh, slap across the face. Wow. That just. That just sours the mood here in UCWC. Kid well, Katie, I think he had this match won. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta agree with that. I think Kid Kate could have very easily won this match. Ladies and gentlemen, when we return, our main event, the Ultra, or excuse me, the, the UCW Zero Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Stay tuned. Beyond Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero, Utah's best live pro wrestling action in Salt Lake City, Utah, at the UCW Training Center, 47 South Orange Street. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $3 for kids 6 and under. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bell time is 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to www.ucw-0.com or call 801-699-7977. And remember, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. Leave it to us. We are Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Motivational pain. say because that man's t-shirt says it all right there the face of UCW Zero and I don't know if I agree with that personally Derek well he's adorned in gold and that could be a premonition of what may occur and that's what this match is all about a triple threat match with the UCW Zero heavyweight championship Paco's wearing gold and by the end of the night he could be wearing the gold that matters Los Mochi Paco has been a staple here in UCW Zero. Fans come to know him. It's, he's one of the only superstars where fans will get up on their feet for him. I know that much. And it's entrance music takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. The question is that after a serious length of time out, is the ring rust still there? Or could Los Mochi Paco become the new UCW Zero Heavyweight Champion. What Josh referring to, obviously, the 14th month recovery time needed for the repair of the leg of Paco. But I think he's back. I think he's back in full strength. And I think the belt is his to win tonight in UCW Zero. And one of our challenger, the winner of the 2013 Rocky Mountain Rumble, Martin Casals. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, you want to talk about 
being the face of UCW Zero, Martin is half of the reason why there's half of the equipment here in this building. Martin has traversally financed over half of this company. Little do people know it, Martin is actually a co-owner of this company. And that's the bottom line here, is that without Martin Casals, this company would be nothing. Well, I'm not going to argue with you, but what I am going to say about Martin Casals is this guy has taken a drastic turn left in the last three months. He turned on me, he's turned on all of his other friends, and most importantly, he's turned on the fans of Ultra Championship Wrestling. Let, let your real feelings go. I want to hear about your former friends. Well, I'll never ever take away the fact that Martin Casals is the best wrestler in UCW Zero. I believe that. But the fact of the matter is, is that sometimes it's not the right thing to do to step over people to make your way back to the top, and that's exactly what Martin has done. The real question right here is that, will that title belt feed that ego? Right now, the fans chanting overrated for Martin Casals. The camera guy can get a shot at the new UCW Zero Bell. That is one beautiful, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous championship belt. I don't think I've seen one as good luck looking. Well, I gotta agree with you, but you know what? Right now, technically, that belt belongs to this man, the current UCW Zero Heavyweight Champion, in Jason Bravo. Jason Bravo, with one short exception, has been the champion for the better half of 10 months. An unbelievable reign, the second largest, longest reign in UCW Zero history. Do you know who the longest reigning champion in UCW was? One of his opponents tonight, Martin Casals. That it was. Martin Casals, an almost two year unprecedented reign as UCW Zero Heavyweight Champion. Only rivaled by the current 10 month reign of that man making his way to the ring right now, Jason Bravo. And I gotta tell you what, someone who would love to get their hands on that title belt is his other opponent, Los Mochi Paco. Yeah, I love this match because you're looking at literally the three most successful UCW Zero champions we've ever had. We've talked about the current reign of Jason Bravo. We've talked about the almost two-year reign of Martin Casals. And how could we ever forget that very successful reign of Los Mochi Paco. The quality of matches, the opponents he faced, an unbelievable title reign, and he wants nothing more than to get that belt back around his waist. I hope he doesn't have halitosis. No, definitely not. The big question on the mind tonight as well is will Jason Bravo be able to trade in that current belt for the new UCW Zero Heavyweight Championship? And look at the exchange being made between Bravo and the referee right here. Referee Calvin showing the old, which will be replaced with the new. And that's what this match is all about. The UCW Zero Heavyweight Championship. The winner of the 2013 Rocky Mountain Rumble. A winner of a number one contenders match against Mark Casals. And the current champion squaring off. And it's all about the belt. Well, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This contest about to be underway. There must be a champion at the end of this contest. And Josh, why don't you be bold? Who do you think is going to win this match? I really, really think that it could go a number of different ways. It would not surprise me if the champion would be able to retain because he is just that good. He's been able to pull himself out of certain situations, come back from behind, and be a brawler that he truly is. At the same time, he's got two former champions going up against him. I really don't think that Los Mochi Pacos and his crowd reaction is going to be enough to stop Martin Casals here in this contest. Yeah, I think if I had to pick him, and I'm going to be bold right now, I think Martin Casals has the advantage in this matchup. He's got the advantage of experience. The guy is, is riding a wave of momentum right now. I think he's got this match.
And maybe an inadvertent slap by Martin Casals to Jason Bravo. Triple threat matches, a different beast. Like we mentioned in the triple threat we had last week. You don't have to, as the champion, you do not have to be pinned to lose the match. And right now we could see Jason Bravo lose his UCW Zero Championship without being pinned. You're exactly right, right there. I'll give that to you. Oh, here we go, a three-way test of strength. Oh! Both guys upset at Paco. Oh, and a double slap. And I think Paco's made the mistake of he singled himself out, and now he's getting beat up. Martin Casales wants Paco all to himself. Turnabout's fair play, but Jason Bravo wants Paco all to himself. You gotta remember, all of these guys have history with each other. Paco and Jason Bravo had a nice feud, even though Paco was here at the broadcaster's table. Paco and Martin Casals, of course, have been on and off friends, and then Martin Casals was one of the people who helped groom Jason Bravo. Yes, and look at Paco right now, all the momentum in his favor. Up and over, catches, head scissors, oh, and Jason Bravo taken outside the ring. Oh, clothesline to the outside by Martin Casals. Here we go, this is vintage Casals right that here. Big dive by Casals. Oh my goodness. The athleticism of this man. That man just gets so much air, takes such a high risk, and it connects every single time. The athleticism accompanied by the arrogance. That's Martin Casals. Cover in the center of the ring. And Martin Casals not able to put Paco away at this juncture in the match. And here we go now. Martin Casals with an Irish, or no, just kidding. I thought he was going to go for an Irish whip there, but it looks like, oh, chops to the chest of Los Mochi Paco. Big drop kick. The best in UCW Zero. Beautiful drop kick there. And again, Paco able to kick out just barely though. Yeah, that wasn't a very strong kick out though. It's pretty clear to me that one of those chops took the wind out of, oh, look at that! Took the wind out of Los Mochi Paco. Bravo is looking to take advantage of the situation right here. Are we gonna see some combo time? And this might not be anybody else's favorite move, but it is definitely Jason Bravo's favorite maneuver. Bravo combo, looks like it's very effective. One, oh no, Martin Casals there, able to kick out. Oh, look at this now. And this is definitely every man for himself. That's the way it should be. Pinfall right here by Casals. And look at these two men face off. Martin Casals, Jason Bravo, one of the veteran of UCW Zero versus a man riding a momentum streak that is pretty much unprecedented. Here we go now, Irish whip, reversed by Casals into the ropes. Look at this now, drop to a hold. Casals, tying up those legs, what's he going for here? This looks like an Indian deathlock variation. Wow. Well, and Los Mochi Paco now. Look at this. Wait a minute. Is he? It looks he's, like he's got an abdominal stretch on Los Mochi Paco while an Indian deadlock held on Martin Casals. Well, and Los Mochi Paco says, no way. Not today. Oh. Counter Russian leg sweep by Los Mochi Paco, causing more pressure on the leg of Jason Bravo. One, two. Only a two count there as Paco tries to pin Casals. Paco now takes his efforts over to Jason Bravo. Irish whip, oh and it looks like a reversal there by Bravo. What's this? Bravo's gonna throw, no! Oh, big hang up right there. Awesome maneuver there. Elevated hangman a la the, la the macho man, Reggie Oh! And then a boot right to the side of the head of Martin Casals. Jason Bravo looks dominant in this match right now. 
What the heck are we looking at oh, here? No way. No, no way. way. Double neck breaker on the. Oh! Oh my goodness. And the question now is which man is Jason Bravo going to roll into the ring to pin because both of these guys are fit for the taking? Bravo needs to single out one competitor, drag his carcass into the ring and pin him because he's got this match won. Jason Bravo, the first to his feet. Bravo rolls Martin Casals inside the ring. Goes for the pin here. One, two, only a two count right there. Not enough to eliminate Casals. And I'm surprised. I'm surprised Martin was able to kick out from that. Look, Look at this Jason now. Bravo driving his knee pads into the temple of Martin Casals. Duck by Casals. Here comes a German. Got it. Looking for two. Nicely executed, those rolling Germans. And look at the back of the head of Jason Bravo. Oh no, Bravo able to block it. He blocks two. Oh, and he fires back with some elbows. Make it two of them, and now he's gonna hook him up. Belly to back. Oh, and sets him crotch first on the ring post. And now, here we go now. Look at this, this is what Bravo did earlier. Except it was to the outside, Paco. Looks like he's going to be able to counter here. A, oh, a big punch right there. Martin Casals hanging upside down precariously in the center of the ring. Or in the corner, excuse me. Nice counter there by Los Mochi Paco. Bravo hit the corner. Oh, what's this? And that peacock might as well be a bullseye. Because right now, Los Mochi Paco is making mashed potatoes out of Martin Casals' groin. No! Look at the resourcefulness of Martin Casals sitting up in almost a version of a German suplex. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're watching here is truly history. A new era that is coming here in UCW Zero with the changing of a brand new UCW Zero heavyweight championship. Jason Bravo down in the court in the corner. Paco laying helpless in the center of the ring and Martin Casal standing strong. Nice counter by Bravo. Float over. He's going to hook him for that big pump handle. This could be it. He's got it. But Bravo looks like his shoulder still feeling the effects of meeting that post. One, two. Oh, Casals barely kicks out. A lot of questions here. Ladies and gentlemen at UCW Zero, can Jason Bravo retain? Will Martin Casales' remarks about how he is the face of this company be perfected tonight by winning the Ultra X title, or excuse me, the UCW Heavyweight Championship? Or will Los Mochi Paco make a crucial and devastating rehab all worthwhile? And right now, we can answer that question. Is Jason Bravo attempting to get Martin to the top rope? Maybe going for a superplex here. Look at this now. Superplex off of the middle rope is what Bravo is attempting to do. Casals resisting. Paco is going to try and get in on the picture now. Those shots to the back of Jason Bravo. Oh, jeez! Did you say the way that Bravo's leg bent? That's got to hurt. Legs aren't supposed to bend that way. And now Los Mochi Paco going to the top rope. What could he be going for? Martin Casals being beat up in the corner. Paco looks like he's going for a superplex. Oh! And he got it, but he held on. And now he's going to the top rope. No way! Oh! Plancha outside the ring onto Jason Bravo. And Casals looks like he's in a bad way, but Paco's not in the ring to get the pinfall. Janetti, you gotta ask, 
asked, what's your strategy in a triple threat? Well, it sounds simple, but not get pinned. And I think you have to be the opportunist in a match such as this. But when you're outside the ring, such as Jason Bravo, it's hard to be the opportunist. But that's exactly what Bravo could be going for as he goes up to the top rope. Oh, and I'm not sure if that was on accident or on purpose, but Martin Casals pushed the Paco back into the ropes, causing Jason Bravo to fall to his groin in the corner. goodness what are we seeing here oh my gosh no way electric chair job vertical suplex all three men down who do you think's got the advantage here uh i think martin does because he's slightly on top of Paco, and that could count as a pin martin casals who's he gonna pin here Either one would be go. good go for the Paco. One, two. Oh, Paco kicks out. Go for Bravo, go for Bravo. One, two, oh. This is insane. This is what the UCW Zero title is all about. A great title match such as this, very fitting. Casaus, he's got Bravo. He shoots him. Nice reversal. Sunset flip. Oh, look at this! Oklahoma O'Connor roll. Nice counter into a small package. Into a. Look at these guys all trying to win. One you, for the knockout. They heard it outside the building. They heard it three miles away. Shining wizard. Martin Casals' foot right to the head of Bravo. He looks KO. Look at this now. What? Wait a minute. What is Casals doing? Oh, a double DDT. Ingenious by Casals. One, two, that's it, no. Paco barely kicked out. How much punishment can one man deliver? Martin Casals looks like the alpha male in this match. Paco counters. He could be looking for that Mochiville sunset. This is his favorite maneuver. Reversal. Push off here. And he's got a sleeper. Oh, Bravo. Foot to the face of Casals, but Bravo could get choked out right here. Looks like Bravo could be fading. Paco's got that sleeper cinched on. This is the way you can win the title. One, it needs to go down two more times. And Los Mochi Paco is UCW Heavyweight Champion. That's this two. Is it. Jason Bravo looks completely out. Will the hand drop? No! Oh. Trying to rally the crowd back to his cause. I don't think that's going to work. Oh, Jason Bravo, everything he can muster, driving the back of Paco into that buckle. Oh, no way. Oh, my gosh. Almost a double Death Valley driver. Oh. What is it going to take, Josh? What is it going to take? for one of these guys to pin another and become the champ. Sweat, blood, determination, a lot more than what's currently being delivered. What a kick by Los Mochi Paco. He could be going up to the top rope. We've seen him use the splash numerous times to beat numerous competitors. Is that what this will be? To the top rope. No, he's up. Oh my God! He caught him in mid-air and speared him. That has got to be it. The 
Chris House crawls over, hooks a leg, one, two, oh! And Bravo barely makes the save. Jason Bravo is not about to let his title hopes go out that quickly. Look at this, Casals' title hopes may be fading. Oh no, look at this, Bravo to the outside. Turns around, oh and Paco, he could be going for that Mochiville sunset. The flipping pile driver, it is over. Oh, New no. heavyweight champion. No, not like this, One, no, two. no. the count. He stopped the referee's hand from hitting the mat. Martin Casals is out. Look at this now. Bravo picks up Paco. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, cow. Innovative maneuver. Very impactful. That is it. He has retained the... No. The fans are starting to a frenzy. Who will win this matchup? Everyone is asking. This is absolutely unbelievable. Bravo. Tell him Los Mochi Paco. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. Son. That's it. No. He's going to steal it. No. Uh oh. Mochiville Sunset on Bravo. Every fan in this arena will remember this match. For better or for worse, that is our UCW Zero Heavyweight Champion. For all of us here at UCW Zero, I'm Josh Damien. Thank you to Derek Gennetti. Have a good rest of your night. BR Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Utah's best live pro wrestling action in Salt Lake City, Utah. At the UCW Training Center, 47 South Orange Street. Tickets are $10 for general admission and $3 for kids 6 and under. Doors open at 6 p.m. and bell time is 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to www.ucw-0.com or call 801-699-7977. And remember, do not try this at home. We are trained professionals. Leave it to us. We are Ultra Championship Wrestling Zero. Motivational pain.